As of the beginning of 2020, I had three fully functioning restaurants and the Pegu Club uh, is, was in its 15th year and, you know, we were still operating and no reason to, uh, you know, to be closing uh, those doors other than what's, what's happened with this pandemic. In the past few months, small businesses have been clobbered by the coronavirus pandemic. Due to stay-at-home orders, a small online presence, or high overhead costs, many businesses have had to close their doors for good. We just looked at the numbers for that, and, and it became clear very quickly that that was not a business that was going to be able to recover. Uh, and so we just saved ourselves a lot of time and agony and gave it a very sad and unceremonious, you know, goodbye. And it makes us angry, you know, for, for not just the business that we had to close, but for the, the interruption of the success that we were experiencing from decades of hard work. And we were very good at what we do. And uh, it's, it's devastating and it's sad and it, it makes me angry to lose all of this overnight. Many others could face the same fate. According to a survey by Main Street America, 7.5 million small businesses are at risk of closing in the next five months. The four business owners we spoke to employed 30 people. Now they're out of work. Really, we're a boutique local brewery. We depended about 75% of our revenue on people coming into the tasting room and drinking beer there. It was pretty obvious to us, given the challenges that we already faced, that there was no way our business was going to survive this. It was a relatively easy decision for us to make. You know, e e even though um, everyone is either laid off or furloughed at this point, um, I'm keeping an eye open to see how I can help uh, them survive. Right? Regardless of whether I'm running the business, I want to make sure that everyone's okay. So I own a uh, Loopman and Small Wedding Company in Savannah, Georgia. We had a space called the Savannah Cozy Chapel, where we did very small weddings, um, license signings, um, groups of 20 or less, who wanted to celebrate um, in private in a specific kind of place. It wasn't necessarily just a financial decision. Um, it was about being able to uh, protect my entire business. But the saddest part about what will be lost is the space that we created. Have you processed this emotionally? 33 years of business and now your, your store has disappeared. Your business is gone in the blink of an eye. You know, if you ever had gone through, you know, losing a parent or anybody close to you where, you know, you have to then go and empty out the apartment, that was exactly how I felt. Small business layoffs are now showing signs of leveling off. Those layoffs spiked over 1,000 percent back in March, and furloughs jumped 138 percent from March to April. That's according to data from human resource provider Gusto. But Gusto says in the last two weeks of April, some small businesses started bringing their workers back. Here's what some of those business owners are going through in their own words. Between all three businesses, we're down almost 90% in sales and revenue, um, making it very difficult to proceed. We can't close the doors. It's a family-owned business. My brother, my dad, my little sister all work here, and we're trying to keep it going. We've been in the parking lot since 1992, so we've been around for 28 years. We don't want to lose it. Like many of you, we had to make the difficult decision to close our doors about two months ago. We actually made the decision before the orders were put in place by our um, our governor in the state of Pennsylvania, and we made that decision just because there were so many things out of our control. We've um, tried to hire back as many of our employees as possible. Um, some don't want to come back yet. They feel it's uh, too soon. They're, they don't feel safe enough. We've uh, added curbside pickup, where we have contact-free pickup to, for people to get food to go to try to build our sales. But even with all these efforts, um, we are still operating at 90% below our typical revenue. I do have some concerns. I mean, something is, and I don't think this is minor, but something as simple as, as disinfecting our office, the 
the way our office is set up, we're going to have to pivot and transition and change the way that we offer services to our clients. Mental health is a very intimate experience and having to bring clients in and, and really provide services with masks on and not be able to see as many people in one day because we have to make sure the offices are sterilized. So we're going to have to change the whole structure of our business. COVID didn't end. It didn't go away and that people aren't coming back out. Uh, for us to be back to 100% um, revenue, that'd be 100% revenue going forward today. That does not make up for the 186% uh, of revenue that we've lost since March 8th. So we need a, you know, a, a broader vision, a bigger vision of how to actually bring this back together and truly save the small business. Without it, the small businesses are going to disappear. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.